Hey everyone, welcome to week 46. This is day one. This is the beginning of a new week, new theme. And the theme for this week is going to be intent. We are going to compare what we initially wanted to do when we started the painting with the result of the painting, with the finished painting. And hopefully those two match. And if they don't, hopefully what comes out is actually like an interesting painting. So we'll see how we do today. Okay, let's get started. This is Monday. This is our first day in our intent week. And I think this week is going to be pretty cool because for the longest time, I've been taught that a painting has to be measured by how close it can state its original intent. That is the most objective basis for judging a painting. And honestly, as a teacher and as a painter, I think that that is the most fair way in which you can judge a work of art, particularly those works of art of students, for example. We've talked about this before, but instead of me imposing my views onto a young artist's work and then judging them as being successful if they are close to my own sensibility or unsuccessful if they stray far from my own liking, rather than doing that, which is completely subjective, the most fair way and many times the only way in which you can judge somebody's artwork is by saying, what did you want to do? What did you intend to do? And based on their answer, based on their intentions, based on the clarity that they have when identifying their intentions, you can then say, okay, now let's look at the decisions that you took in the execution of this painting to see if they brought you closer to that initial goal that you had set out for yourself, or if you started to steer farther and farther away from that initial intent. So that to me, as somebody who taught for 12 years in an institution, in a fine arts faculty, that was the only way in which I would be able to judge the manner in which 20 different students tried to solve in 20 different ways a problem that I had proposed to them. Because if you don't do that, it's impossible. Or, I mean, it's not impossible. I guess that the easiest way to do it is to say, these are the uh, rules that we're all going to use. And based upon those rules, we're going to see who can respect them the most in the end. It is within those rules that you can judge somebody's artwork. So let's say if you are judging a figure drawing in which you are emphasizing proportions and you had already set out a manner in which you know, students are able to check proportions. And as a collective, you have all identified those fundamentals as the rules that are going to be true for everyone in there, for every single person in there. If you abide by those rules, then you're going to be able to make an effective drawing. And if you don't, then your drawing is going to be disproportionate. It's sort of that binary way of thinking that we were talking about a couple of days ago, where, you know, me as a student... I kind of wanted that, you know, when I started drawing and painting, I was a little lost. And because I had so many teachers that were telling me so many different ways of solving something, and they all expected you to be faithful to their way of solving each thing, the easiest way for me was like, okay, just tell me if you think it's right and tell me if you think it's wrong. Now, in my mind, I was able to convince myself that they didn't hold the truth. This wasn't like a single teacher would hold the whole of the truth. No, because I had, for example, five different drawing teachers and they were all telling me different ways to solve drawing. And maybe some of those ways were closer to my own sensibility than others. But still, I wanted to take those teachers because they were challenging. They were actually asking of me to be able to resolve a problem in ways that didn't come naturally to me. So I always seek that. I always wanted to be challenged. I always wanted to feel kind of stupid while I was drawing just in order to know that I was learning something. But the toughest part about having different ways of understanding, in our cases, uh, drawing and painting, the most difficult thing to do there is to respond honestly to what they're asking of you. And the easiest way for me to do that was by saying, tell me when you feel something is right and tell me when you feel something is wrong. And sure, it was difficult to kind of change gears between classes and to understand that I had to change the manner in which I saw drawing and obviously change the manner in which I ultimately resolved the drawing. And that was tough. But for me, it was easiest when I could just say, I put my trust in you as a teacher 
and just tell me if it's right. Tell me why you think it's right. Showcase the things that you think that I'm doing well. And if it's wrong, tell me why you think it's wrong and tell me how you would fix it. And if you can, show me. For me, we've talked about this, for somebody to be able to show me. Yeah, fine, talk to me. But also, if you can, if you see that I'm completely lost, please show me. Because that is going to teach me in ways that words simply can't. Many times, now that I'm older, many times I don't really feel that I need for somebody to show me something. Now what I want is for them to talk to me and to make me realize that maybe while I'm attempting to explain something, to explain the reason for doing something, I am at some point faltering. And if they can catch me in those moments where I feel like I could justify with clarity something and maybe I really didn't have that clarity, I like that people will then challenge me and point that out. But nowadays, I don't think it has to do with just painting, with just show me how to paint something. So yes, we've established that at different moments, you know, in your career, in your life, there are times that we could seek having these collective rules that we can all abide by, and we can be either wrong or right. And then at other moments, people are going to bring completely different sensibilities and they are going to try to solve issues in very many, many different ways. And yes, the basis of the exercise may be something that is shared by the whole group, but the way people will manifest themselves through the work could be so varied that it is amazing. It is a joy to look at and experience the way in which amazing young artists have solved some of the obstacles that I've put along their way. So I am super grateful that life gave me the opportunity to have that experience with those young artists. And as I said, starting this video, the easiest way for me to understand what they were trying to do was by asking them and I always told them I'm gonna first ask you and hopefully you will answer with honesty and based on your honesty and based on your answer we can start trying to untangle the uh, painting that you made now if we want to get into this a little bit more when I say if you are honest what that actually means is that you are capable of identifying intent all this equation means nothing if you're incapable of identifying why you do things. While that may be super simple to accept, the reality is that understanding why we do things, you know, recognizing our intent, it's so hard. I mean, we're not talking about this being a very trivial thing. No, this is one of the most fundamental aspects of being an artist, where you're trying to say something, you're trying to communicate something, and you understand the decisions that you took when trying to communicate it effectively. That is what makes a powerful work of art. You know what you want to say and you make decisions along the way so that what you want to say has been emphasized by those very decisions that you took, right? That's a super simple way of understanding the creative process. But many times the truth is we have no idea. You know, we, we don't. We don't know what it is that we want to say. And let's start with today's painting. And I'll give you a perfect example. And it's going to become a perfect starting point. If you've been listening to me, but if you've been looking at the painting that I've been doing, you've been sensing that I am struggling with the uh, drawing, with the very sensitive drawing that I have to solve in that sort of profile of Fer. The reason I'm struggling is because what I wanted to paint when I started painting, and I'm gonna be 100% honest with you guys because it makes no sense if I'm not, what I wanted to paint was like a sergeant painting. I told myself, I'm gonna do a very brushy atmospheric painting. I have this head, I have this profile where most of the profile is actually backlit and I only have a little bit of rim lighting you know, right at the edge of that profile that's describing beautifully those features. And I just have to, make this mass of a very open shadow and then just be very sensitive with my contour drawing of that light. And I told myself, I can do this. I can paint this very atmospheric light that's in the back. I don't have to be descriptive. You know, I don't have to say what is in the back to actually paint that light. I just have to be faithful to those values. And then when I hit those accents that are pushing that little bit of light that's traveling beautifully through that contour, then, you know, that head is going to pop and I'm going to do it in a very painterly fashion. I'm not really going to need drawing marks in that sense. I'm going to do it through painting. I'm going to do it through mark making. I'm going to do it through big, 
luscious, fresh brushstrokes. I want to solve this profile in that bold manner. And I started trying to do that. And I don't know what I was hoping for when I realized that this was going to be very, very difficult for me. For some reason, I kept kind of iterating at the decisions that I was making. I was kind of painting them and then scraping them, then painting them, scraping them. And I was just repeating and repeating and repeating myself. And I was convincing myself that all I needed was to be more sensitive, more sensitive with those brushstrokes, because I realized that those brushstrokes had to be, I mean, and this was imperative, they had to be so, so sensitive to the drawing of that contour, because if they weren't, then the whole painting just fell apart. I mean, the whole of the painting was dependent on me being capable of resolving with kind of elegance that contour. And the truth is that I couldn't. <laughs> I mean, we have to be super honest about this, but I just couldn't do it. It was tough. It was a little too tough for me. And I thought I would be able to. And I thought, you know, me being very nonchalant about that drawing and trusted a little bit too much the way in which I could just drop a brushstroke and it would give me a ton of clarity. To be very, very honest, my drawing is not that strong. My drawing is not strong enough to do that. And my discipline while I paint is not good enough to be able to do that either. So whenever I drop a brushstroke, I'm very expressive about it. Like I trust my instincts more than I would a disciplined decision, a thought out decision. So that clearly wasn't helpful when I was trying to solve this painting. And I had to eat my humble pie and say, you know what? I have to try to redraw this again and I have to try to repaint it. And there's a point in the painting where I told myself, okay, this week was supposed to be about me telling you guys, I want to do a Sargent-ish style profile. I want to solve it with these big luscious brushstrokes. And these are the decisions that I made during the way to enable me to produce what in the end is going to be a painting that, yeah, it's not going to be a Sargent because what is, but it's going to be reminiscent of those very beautiful, you know, luscious, sensuous qualities. That in my mind was going to be today's painting. And midway, I was like, okay, this is not happening. This is clearly not going to happen. And at that point, I really only had two possibilities. I had to tell myself, okay, this clearly is a painting that's never going to work out. Let's just put it to the side, breathe and tell Danny, Danny, this was terrible. Let's stop recording. We have to do another video. Or I could just redirect the painting towards where? I don't really know. I don't have a plan now. You know, I didn't have a plan B. My plan was Sargent or throw it to the garbage can. So honestly, I didn't know where to go with this. So I told myself, okay, you need to find a middle ground. You know, you need to find a place where you can say, it was a sergeant, now it's chaos and nothing, and we are going to take that mashed potato of a painting and say, let's give it a new direction, let's give it a new life, let's Frankenstein this thing into life and let's make a painting. Even though it was clearly a lost effort, let's give it some sort of life and push yourself to make it a painting. You know, because in the end, that's what matters. I mean, sure, it wasn't the painting that I intended, but I'm still a painter. I still have to be able to take all the crap that the painting is throwing back at me. I mean, let's not blame the painting. I myself was throwing plenty of crap to it, so there's no fault in the painting. But I have to deal with all that rejection that my painting is kind of throwing in my face, and I could choose to feel destroyed and say, yeah, I'm not good enough. I thought I could paint this this way, and I can't. And today just is a terrible day. Let's go to sleep early. I don't want to deal with any of this frustration anymore. Or we can say, well, let me see. Let me see if I navigate this, if I give it a shot, if I really, really try to take this painting to a place that was initially unexplored because I didn't conceive it, you know, my intent was vastly different from wherever this painting is headed now. And that proves to be disconcerting while you're painting. So that journey is never going to be comfortable. But I gave it a shot and I told myself, I'm going to try to do this. And what's really weird is that I had to fight like tooth and nail and I have to draw and redraw and repaint and rethink. And I had to find the attitude, the right 
kind of expression that was emerging from all this fighting with the painting and tell myself, this is the life that this painting wants to lead, you know? I thought I could impose something else onto this painting, but apparently it wants to be something else. Now, maybe this is just a very theatrical way of me interpreting my missteps, but it actually helps me to understand that, sure, you weren't going to be able to solve that painting, you know, in the way you intended it, but try something else, discover something else, you know, fight it out. Some paintings are asking you not to be elegant, you know, you're not fencing here. Some paintings are asking you to be super scrappy. There's no rules. Fight with whatever you have, really duke it out and try, try to come out the other side with something, anything. Because what matters in the end is that you have a painting, you have this testament of that fighting, you have this image that can actually speak about that moment where you had to come up with something, where you had to come up with a solution. So I think that this painting is a beautiful way to start the week because initially I thought, okay, let's start the week off with the right foot and let's just say, hey guys, this is what I wanna do. I've recognized a manner of solving this painting, which I think is going to solve it elegantly and beautifully. I'm going to try to invoke my inner sergeant, whatever that means, because I don't know. I don't know if sergeant likes to live in my body. I'm pretty sure he doesn't. But I'm going to try to invoke my inner sergeant, and I'm going to say, I'm going to be brushy and elegant and sensitive. You know, I can totally do this. And my painting was like, "Uh uh-uh, you're not. And yeah, I just had to accept it. My painting was asking of me to be honest with myself and say, yeah, this is not going to happen. You can just scrape me and then take a walk or go to sleep or call it a day. Or you're free to just stay here and battle it out for a couple of hours and see what happens. And... I'm always going to be of the mind of wanting to just battle the hell out with a painting. I want to fight for my life when I'm painting. I love that feeling. I mean, it's despair and you don't know what you're doing and you don't see a way out. I mean, there's no light at the end of that tunnel. This is pitch black. But you tell yourself, keep going, you know. It can't get worse than this. I mean, I've scraped the painting four times, five times. How worse can it get? I've embraced that feeling of being defeated time and time again. Every time I scraped it, I was like, no, this is not working. No, this is not working. No, this is not working. So every time I feel that feeling, I'm like, just get used to it. Get used to it. Like, you have to get used to that rejection. And it's not just about banging your head against the wall a thousand times. No, every time something happens... You have to tell yourself, what is this damn painting trying to tell me? Like, what am I doing wrong? Where am I off? What can I do to change the course of this painting? And for me, it was, again, drawing, redrawing, drawing, redrawing, redrawing, and then finally finding a point where all that drawing that I was doing could sort of meet with the more painterly decisions that I had made and just trying to find a balance between those two. I even stopped because I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm done with this because it's as good as I'm going to be able to make it. But the truth is, in the end, I wasn't happy with that eye that I was painting. We had stopped recording. Danny had stopped everything. And I told her, I'm not happy. I just don't like it. I just don't feel comfortable with this eye. And she was like, what do you want to do? You want to set up again and just keep going? And I'm like, no, no, that's too much of a hassle. Like, no, no, no. I'm just going to scrape it. And I thought initially that I was just scrape everything. And, you know, in my mind, I was like, do it. It's always 50-50. If you think in life, everything is 50-50. Life is not super complicated. Why is it 50-50? Because things are either going to work out or they're not. That's a pretty cool way of looking at life, I think. So I told myself, I'm going to scrape it. And it's either going to ruin the painting, but I'm not really happy with the painting. So that's that. Or it's going to be a little bit better. And I scraped the right side of that eye. And I actually kind of blended it with the shadow mass. But you guys can't see that because I did it immediately after we stopped recording. But I did that and I was like... Yeah, that's better. That's a lot better. And that was the only moment during the painting. And I mean, I got there right after we stopped recording, but it was the only moment in that painting where I heard this tiny little voice, you know, this tiny little glimmer of hope just telling me, okay, now you can let me be. I'm as good as it's going to get today. And I was like, yes, we got there. There were no cannons firing. There were no fireworks. No, nothing like that. It wasn't this triumphant march. No, no. It was just like, you know what? We made it. We made it through. And some days, some days, that's more than enough. So that was today. Today I was supposed to show you guys clarity. No, I 
hopefully showed you guys that I can be scrappy as hell and I can fight my way through a painting and I can take it to a place that I didn't really plan on taking it. And I thought it was awesome because it's kind of those two definitions of intent that we started talking about, which is the painting was either going to be a sergeant or not. It was binary. It was either right or wrong. And as soon as I realized, oh, no, this is not going to be anywhere near something that is reminiscent of Sergeant, that we can interpret as the wrong. And then I realized, okay, F my initial intent. I'm going to have to fight my way through this and try to understand my intent as I go. I'm totally lost now. That's all I know. That's the one truth I hold. And now I have to finish with a painting. So we messed up, and yet we were able to paint. So that's a very cool lesson about intent, that many times we end up doing a painting that wasn't planned. That doesn't mean that the painting can't be cool because I actually like this painting quite a lot. So, you know, there's no right way of doing this. That's going to be it for today. Join us tomorrow. Remember Tuesday, Spanish Tuesday, Martes Español, where I'm going to try to be, at least for the sake of the exercise, come on, I, I got to try to do this. I'm going to try to be a little more consistent about me identifying my intent and trying to execute it in a congruous manner. So we'll see how that goes, but I think it's going to go a little bit better. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. Bye.